guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday, the weekly YouTube series where we talk about video game console repairs, mods, and restorations. And today we've got something very special for you to take a look at. This is the Sharp Game Television, otherwise known as the Sharp Nintendo TV. So this is a uh, television that was produced in a collaboration between Sharp and Nintendo. And it basically has an NES built into a television. And so, you know, this was an appealing thing at the time. You could get both a brand new television and an NES all built into one unit. Um, so this particular system doesn't work. Uh, it appears that the TV itself works, but the NES does not. Uh, so what we're going to do today is we're going to take this thing apart see if we can figure out what's wrong with it and um, and get it operational again. And then in the meantime, I'll give you a quick tour of, of this uh, unique television and show you uh, what it can do. And, uh, and yeah, and we'll also, you know, hopefully get this thing up and running. And next year, this will be available for you to take a look at yourself at the Long Island Retro Gaming Expo. All right, so let's get started. All right, so I would like to start by just giving you a quick tour of this television and how it works. So, you know, in many respects, it looks like a normal TV, uh, with the exception of a few extra goodies. So, you know, this half of it is basically your standard TV, and you can see here you've got your, your power switch over here. You've got your adjustments for, you know, your volume and channel select, and then you have adjustments for the picture itself to increase the brightness or the co the contrast, etc. So, you know, all that stuff is pretty normal for your TV from the mid-80s. Down here, I don't know if it can sh if you can see it really clearly, but it's actually embossed with the text game. So this is the game part of the game television. When you open it up, you'll see that there is a cartridge slot, a standard NES cartridge slot where you put in your games and, you know, do things just like a standard front loader NES. And you've got your power and reset switches over here, and you've got your, you know, player one and player two controller ports. Those work exactly the same as your standard uh, NES. And then this is the controller. So, you know, the controller itself has a really cool uh, black plastic um, shell that matches the television. And instead of saying Nintendo, it says game television. On the back, though, it has the standard, uh, you know, plastic embossment of, of Nintendo. This is the same as, as what, you know, a regular controller would have. And I already opened it up. The inside is no different than a standard NES controller. But still, it's a really nice look. It matches the aesthetic of, of the TV. Um, and then you'll notice here on the front that there are these four uh, legs. So this television is kind of top-heavy, and so to, you know, prevent it from tipping or anything like this, uh, Sharp added these four support legs, two in the front and two in the back. And these are actually very notorious for breaking. Um, all right, so I'm going to flip around and look at the back of the TV, and I'll show you what's uh, available on the back. Okay, so we're here on the back of the TV, and um, there's actually not much to, to really take a look at over here. So if I zoom in like back here on the ports, you'll notice that it doesn't have composite video or any other type of video output, and that's actually pretty consistent for the time. I mean, this TV was made in the mid-80s. And so what it has is just your standard uh, coaxial input over there, and so that's your standard like um, RF connector. And then it even has the UHF and VHF uh, tuning fork connectors, and that's for older devices. So yeah, you could actually use this TV with something like a Magnavox Odyssey, or like some really, really old uh, console. It has some kind of adjustment uh, ports. You can see them kind of like down here in the in the lower left and here in the center. I'm not entirely sure what those are for, but those are probably some TV adjustment ports. Um, maybe for like the refresh rate or something like that. And that's basically it. There's really not much else. There's some, some Nintendo uh, stickers here on the back. And, and then of course on the center, there, where the where the neck board is, there's you know the sharp logos and all that kind of stuff, and then yeah, just like on the other side, we've got our two ports, or I'm sorry, our two legs rather, uh, for holding up um, the system. You can see here this leg has cracked, and uh, that leg actually completely broke off, but I was able to fix it. And so um, the next thing I'd like to show you is exactly how I fixed it, because um, you know if there are other people out there that have broken legs but still have the broken pieces. This technique worked very well, and um, yeah, I'd like to just kind of show you how I got it uh, working again. All right, so uh, I've basically put the TV onto my couch uh, so that you can see the underside of, of the legs, and I can basically show you what I did to reattach this uh, leg back to the television. 
So yeah, these these are really notorious. These feet are really notorious for, for breaking off. Um, I don't know if it's just that the plastic gets brittle or it's just the fact that they're holding a lot of weight. Probably some combination of both. Um, but yeah, that's very common for these televisions to have at least one or more or all of the feet missing. Um, thankfully, in this particular case, this TV was owned by one person before it was sold to its current owner. And, um, and so this broke off, but they actually kept it. And so when I got it, um, I, I, you know, I, I've, I've done some research in the past for methods for reattaching plastic. And, and so what I decided to use was basically a mixture of a few different processes. The first thing I did was I added epoxy just to do an initial bonding of these two things back together. It was thankfully a very clean break. Um, but the epoxy by itself is definitely not strong enough to reattach uh, the, the foot to the TV. So it was enough just to kind of make a, you know, watertight seal, but definitely not strong enough to hold the TV. I still had to kind of like support this thing. So then the next thing I did, and as you'll notice, there's all this like white stuff over here. And what that is, is actually a combination of uh, crazy glue and baking powder. So uh, I've learned in the past that if you take, uh, you know, the standard, you know, crazy glue, the, uh, the cyanoacrylate glue, you know, the liquidy stuff, and if you combine it with baking powder, it forms a really, really hard compound. So it, it basically bonds together and makes something really strong. And it adheres to everything, uh, including plastics. So I've used this method in the past to, you know, give structural support to plastics or to rebuild uh, plastics that have broken off, like hinges and things like that. And then once this stuff bonds, you can actually file it away and shape it into any shape that you want. It's not pretty, so it's not something you want to use on the exterior of um, of a product, because then you'll see it and it looks rather awful. But, you know, it's structurally very, very strong. Um, so, so that's what I did over here. So I put in, a, basically added in the baking powder, then I added in the liquid crazy glue, and then with, um, you know, like a, a, a little coffee stirring stick, I measured, I, I mixed all that stuff together, and it, and also it hardens very quickly. So, so in the end, you get something that's really secure. Like this is actually probably stronger than the other three feet, and um, and so I was able to reattach it securely, and it's been and it's been on there for you know a few days now. I've had that, I've actually had the TV for a little while, um, and it's not going anywhere. So yeah, if you ever have issues with the feet breaking off and you still fortunately have the feet, you can reattach them using this method and it works very nicely. Um, yeah, all right, so, so now that that's all done, let's go ahead and open up the television, see what's inside, and try to see if we can get that Nintendo running again. Okay, so uh, I started with the base of the television and what I discovered is that it's held in place by four screws. So there's one here, one here, one over here, and one over here. And surprisingly, that's really it. Um, so yeah, when you when you take apart, oof, boy. <laughs> when you take apart those screws, this base just slides right out. Um, you'll, I'm not sure if this is showing up on camera over here, but if you take a look, you'll see that, um, hang on a second. The cables that connect the NES to the rest of the television are all right here. So I, I assume that this is audio, video, and power all going out from the NES to the television. All of that stuff is right here, and it just goes through these little connector ports up and into the TV. Um, so that's actually really nice. I think that my problem is with the NES, and so I, I can potentially just like not even mess with the TV and open all this up. Of course, because, you know, it's me, <laughs> I'm gonna open up the TV anyway because I'd like to show you guys how things look on the inside. Um, but yeah, for now, uh, the next step I need to figure out is just how to disconnect these safely. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Okay, um, so I had to kind of switch to a hand camera right now because there's really no other way to do this because I kind of have everything just barely holding together here. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so I, I took those four screws off and then, and then this base just totally disconnects. And when I, I took off the base, there were a whole bunch of other screws um, on the top, which I will show you once I have this in a more manageable state. But I wanted to kind of give you a quick tour of just how things look inside of the base of the Sharp uh, game television. 
So, um, so yeah, you can see here, this is the controller port PCB, which is broken out into an extension cable over here. Here's your power and reset buttons, which are, are just uh, sitting right there. And then here's your, your Nintendo, which in many ways looks like a normal Nintendo, except that it's missing the RF modulator part and the uh, composite video out, which normally sits like off here on, on this side. Um, so this is just the standard Nintendo mainboard, as far as I can tell. And then down here, we've got like an isolation transformer um, and, and power regulation for the NES. And so then a whole bunch of wires basically go through the base and then connect over to the television, which I'd already shown you before. Um, I don't have it yet fully disassembled. I'm holding it in my hands because I literally have nowhere to put it right now, and I don't want to put any stress on these cables. But I just wanted to take a brief, brief pause and show you what I've done so far. And um, yeah, once I fully disconnect all this stuff, I will... Um, I'll come back and uh, and show you what what's going on. But yeah, thankfully all of these connections are pretty are pretty simple. Um, they're all labeled as well. So for example, there's something here called EC, and then there's labeling on the PCB that says EC, so you know exactly where everything is supposed to go. Um, all right, so I'm <laughs> going to continue disassembling, and then I'll be back in a second with some more details on on how this all looks. All right, so. I finally disassembled everything, and I just kind of wanted to give you an overview of how it all looks when it's when it's connected. Um, so yeah, the Nintendo sits here, and in some ways it's very similar to a stock NES. It's got the same kind of zero insertion force uh, tray and, you know, 72-pin connector. Uh, the board, though, is definitely configured differently. So normally you would have an RF modulator and composite video out and power coming out of here. Instead, you've got a whole bunch of connectors um, on this side of the board that um, that deliver various things. I think you know power and and what have you. These two are the controller ports, so player one and player two. Um, and thankfully, everything on this board is labeled. So they have like DC, which is probably power, and then EC and DD. And, and so you can match those to other places um, for where cables connect, so you can't, you know, easily get confused or, or lost when you're rebuilding this thing. So that's actually really nice. You don't have to, like, document everything when you're taking it apart. You can just simply take it apart and then just follow the, the cables and figure it out from there. Um, one thing I thought that was kind of interesting is that it has the <clears throat> unused uh, expansion port, and this TV was made in 1989, I think, by, by the time that, you know, this was being made, it was pretty clear they were never going to use that port for anything, but they still put it in anyway on this, on this special motherboard. And so this is the, the case, so it kind of just sits like this um, on top. You can see there's a really huge amount of dust on here, and um, this has never been opened before. It's pretty clear that this has never been, never been touched until now. Um, so I am definitely going to go ahead and start cleaning this thing up. And, and so, yeah, I just wanted to kind of briefly show you where the screws were on this. So if someone's trying to disassemble this, they have an idea of where to look. So there were two here. There's one in the center. There's two on this side, two on this side, and one down here. Um, and they're all the same screw sizes, so I actually set them aside here. So all of the outer screws are all the same size. The Nintendo uses different screws, and these are very comparable to the ones that are used on a standard front loader. So they're all the same size, with the exception of two screws, these two guys here. These are the slightly longer ones that go into the 72-pin connector. Otherwise, uh, they're all the same. So, you know, it's not hard to disassemble. The thing that's difficult is just the cables themselves and just making sure that you don't pull on anything too hard. And, and it's just kind of awkward to hold while you're disassembling. But really, all you need is a Phillips screwdriver, and you don't have to keep track of too much uh, when you take it apart. So, so yeah, I'm kind of wondering, like, you know, this thing is really, really dirty. Like, I mean, you can see it on the plastics. It's absolutely caked in filth. Um, I'm wondering if maybe my problem is just simply... A bad 72 pin connector or lots of dirt um, and maybe that's why games aren't working um, so I'm gonna go ahead and give this thing a very very thorough cleaning um, I may replace the 72 pin connector with a, another one that I have um, that also came from it's not a third party it's an official one that is in really good shape and has uh, not been used very much so I'm gonna go ahead and start that whole process of just cleaning everything up and um, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll see what we can do from there. 
All right, so I uh, have been in the process of cleaning all of the case plastics. So I used uh, some Windex, which is pretty much the most benign thing you can imagine, to uh, to get all that stuff off. And there was, my God, there was a ton of dirt in there. But uh, that's, you know, not surprising. It hasn't ever been opened before, and this thing is, you know, 30 years old. So, yeah, I, I did a lot of cleaning, got all that stuff off. Um, right now the plastics are drying, so in the meantime, I turned my attention towards the uh, actual motherboard itself. So, you know, the 72-pin the connector is is the same on this as it is on any other front-loading NES. So I took the original out and I tested it in a stock Nintendo and sure enough I couldn't get anything to run at all. So I have a feeling that this is the problem. So it's nothing you know more complicated than a 72 pin connector. I, I hope. Because uh, yeah I tried that on a standard Nintendo. I couldn't get a single game to run. It feels very loose. Like for those of you who are experienced with Nintendo you know that when these pins bend uh, and you put a game in, you, you barely feel contact, and so that's a telltale sign that the 72 pin is toast. Um, this is a completely new one that I have, uh, and it came from another uh, Nintendo. It's not very well used, so that means that you have a lot of tension in the springs here. So I think that this will be a good substitute, so I'm going to go ahead and put this one in. But in the meantime, I also wanted to just go ahead and clean these edge connectors, because sometimes these get dirty as well. So all I'm doing is just taking some 91% alcohol, and uh, I don't know if this is showing up on camera, but yeah, there's some gunk on here. Um, because sometimes these get really dirty as well, and, and so you can have a good 72 pin, but if these are also dirty, then you're going to have a problem. Oh wow, you can actually see there's quite a lot of dirt on this side. Okay, so that was really good. Um, if it's really, really bad, you can also use a pencil eraser to, to clean these points. Um, this one is actually not bad at all, so I don't think this was the problem. I think more likely it was the 72 pin. Um, but yeah, so, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, just keep cleaning the plastics. Uh, I'm also going to open up the, uh, the television so you guys can see what that looks like on the inside. And uh, yeah, once everything dries off, I'm going to reassemble the case, we'll give this thing a test, and hopefully it was as simple as a bad 72 pin. Alright, I'll be back in a second. Alright, so things are just drying off, and in the meantime I would like to just kind of show you how to open up the television portion of the Sharp uh, Game TV. So this is easy by comparison, so you've got six screws, you've got two here, you've got two over here, and then two inside of the um, carrying handles. You just take them out with a Phillips screwdriver, and then the back just lifts right off, nice and easy. And so here's what it looks like on the inside. Um, so the inside is kind of like a standard TV. Uh, I'm kind of curious where all of those various connections go to, so I'm going to go ahead and move this over to my workbench, and we'll take a look at it over there and see what we find. All right, so I've got the entire television on my bench here, and you can see it's absolutely huge. Um, but what I wanted to do was just kind of show you guys where everything goes from the Nintendo to the TV itself. And so, you know, the Nintendo basically has four cables. One of them here, this is going from the isolation transformer, and it looks like that transformer is powering both the TV and the um the Nintendo. So that goes over to a little daughter board over here and sends power. Um, and that power also gets distributed over to the analog board as well. So it seems like this is, you know, that isolation transformer is the main source for, for everything. Uh, there's also another connector called EB. And that's specifically, I think, related to the Nintendo itself and related to power too. Again, not 100% sure. Uh, that guy is right over here, so it just goes straight into the analog board right over here. Um, this one over here that says DC, this appears to be video and audio. And so this guy comes in and it actually goes to two ports. It goes to this port over here, which is labeled A on the analog board, so that probably means audio. And then kind of all the way, uh, where is it? Right over here, right over here where my finger is, like right next to the TV tuner, there is another little another little port, and that one has also a marking that says V. So that's your composite video and your audio. 
Um, so in principle, you know, you could modify this TV in some way where if, I mean, I would never do it, but you could potentially tap out that audio and video uh, and send it to another source. So, so you could, um, you know, add in a, a port and, and send it out that way. Uh, again, it's not something I would ever do, but, you know, you do have access to that back here on the analog board. Uh, and I think, I think that covers it. The only other thing left is this little guy here that is labeled N, which probably means Nintendo. Uh, this wires directly to the power switch itself. So I think when the power switch is pressed, it sends a signal to the TV to switch over to the Nintendo, uh, mode, basically, to the composite video mode. I haven't quite figured out exactly where that goes, because, you know, this TV's kind of huge. I think it goes way, way back here at the back of the analog board. Pretty sure this is it. But it's a very long cable, so I'm not 100% certain. Um, but yeah, that's the inner workings of the television. You know, in a lot of ways, it looks like a standard analog board, but it just has a few other special inputs directly related to powering and displaying the Nintendo. All right, so I think uh, I'm basically all set. So I'm going to go ahead and go through the whole lengthy process of reassembling everything. And let's just give this thing a test. And if I'm really lucky, maybe it's just the 72-pin connector. Um, okay, I'll be back in quite a bit. All right, so this is the moment of truth. Man, that seriously took me like an hour to rebuild just because it's so difficult to get all the wires back where they're supposed to be. But yeah, it's back, it's fully assembled, and let's see what happens. All right, so we'll start just by getting, yep, our standard static. Let's try a game. Oh yeah, <laughs> there we go. That was it, first time. That was my first attempt at this. Okay, cool. So we have a fully working, sharp game television. And man, it looks really nice. Wow. Okay, uh, I'm gonna play some Ninja Gaiden. <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, if you guys like this content, then uh, definitely you know give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna have videos like this out every Friday, and if you guys are planning on attending the Long Island Retro Gaming Expo next year, you can count on this TV being there for you to try out and enjoy. Alright, thanks again for watching guys, I will see you next time. Bye!